monitor what your data is capable of doing mm -hmm. and what companies can uh, do with your personal data. Okay. Uh, the kind of things they can do with it from like tracking your daily progress to knowing what you eat to knowing your you know the times of the day whatever you do during the times of the day it can get it can get a it can get a bit extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, however as I assured you guys last time um, <laughs> there's nothing much to worry about since most of the data is used by advertisers to just push products that mm -hmm. they need to sell to you. Yeah. So today we're tackling encryption. Encryption, yes. yes. And before we even get to encryption again, mm -hmm. you are introducing yourself, saying that last time you came as a founder of Grape yes. Technology. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, currently, Grape Technologies has been relegated to the project phase uh, because of funding and other issues. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's been relegated to try and understand uh, the impact of data and AI more. Mm -hmm. um, in the short time, uh, in the short uh, from the last time we talked, I released a book called uh, "To Hide or Not to Hide," which tackles the same topic we tackled here uh, last year when we met. Last year, yes. wow, long time ago. So currently, I am the product officer of Akili Cash, which is a startup that's supposed to teach people on financial literacy. Okay. Yes. All right. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Okay, so in the book, I want I, in the book I tend to try and uh, make it sort of like an introductory course into the idea of uh, data, data inclusion, and what to do if you don't feel so confident about people using your data. Mm -hmm. I try and make it as as easy as, as possible to understand, mm -hmm. and I try breaking it down in ways that make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not even a big book, it's about 16 pages. Just try to make it as brief as possible in the, I understand in the quick world, everybody doesn't have time to read like a, a whole 250 book on things like mm -hmm. data privacy. So I try to make it as short as possible. Okay, which um, is good, because mm -hmm. that summarizes everything, all uh, that you need to know about data privacy. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, on to encryption. Mm -hmm. What is encryption? Okay, so encryption. Take encryption like some sort of password. Mm -hmm. So say you have probably an app. Most people use app lockers these days on their phone from their phone apps. So for example, you don't want people to easily access the gallery. You put like a passcode or a pattern. Um, encryption works in a similar way. What it does is that it takes your normal data breaks it down into something that's completely unrecognizable. And then on the other end, there is a system that breaks down whatever was unrecognizable mm -hmm. to show you what was decoded down. So basically, it's encoding, decoding, encoding. What I mean is, mm -hmm. this is one full thing. It's broken down into a thin line, which was not its original shape. And then at the end of it, it's brought back to its original shape, mm -hmm. but only now in the digital sphere. Yes. So um, I think it'll bring it to perspective. Mm -hmm. What are some of the areas where encryption uh, has been applied? Aha, uh -huh, of course. So encryption has been applied to, uh, in the modern day, it has been applied to messaging. Mm -hmm. For example, the messaging app WhatsApp uses end-to-end -end encryption. Mm -hmm. um, other apps, other messaging apps, and mostly very, uh, very vital uh very vital apps and services that require vital information, for example, your social security number or your bank account number or any any particular set of information that is like vital to you. Mm -hmm. um, most of these services and most of these apps use encryption to protect their users' data. Okay. Yes. So when I'm using the ATM, uh, it uses encryption, mm -hmm. paying uh, online, you know, making the online payments yes. uses encryption, WhatsApp uses encryption, yes. right? So there's this, um, I don't know if it's a myth, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's, you know, allegations basically mm -hmm. that um, WhatsApp kind of, as, as much as it's end-to-end -end, encryption, mm -hmm. Uh, our information is still out there that the government can still get our information as much as we are being told that the messaging is private. Uh -huh. So how true is this? Okay, um, it depends on how you look at it. Um, mm. On one of the threats of encryption, uh, <coughs> the government or legislation is one of them. In instances where a crime is committed and there are messages that could attribute or could help 
uh, investigators or prosecutors um, mm -hmm. find evidence, mm -hmm. the government is legally obligated to ask for those messages, a transcript of those messages. In that case, then the government directly has access. But it is only used by the government in cases where there is an ongoing investigation mm -hmm. or there is an allegation that has gotten to the legal system that requires the government to actually look into your data. Otherwise, there is nothing to fear about. Okay. Yes. But um, mm -hmm. we're usually told uh, this, this uh, information that's out there, that especially with WhatsApp for mm -hmm. group admin administrators, mm -hmm. They need to be careful about what is being posted in the group because if any, if anything, you know, uh, let's say hate speech uh -huh. is being discussed there, then they'll be held accountable. But how would they know that there's hate speech? Because maybe nothing um, really substantial has happened, but mm -hmm. how would they know that there's hate speech mm -hmm. unless they're actually monitoring it? Okay, so there are three ways they discover this. Mm -hmm. The first thing is through user reporting. So this, on your WhatsApp feature, sometimes when you want to block somebody, you find the option of block and report. Okay. The block and report option gives the user the option to report in instances of hate crimes, mm -hmm. in instances of insult or abuse online, in instances of cyberbullying and the like. Okay. It was brought about to protect the user. That's the one of the, what's, that's the first instance. The second instance is that in most modern messaging apps and uh, most apps, mm -hmm. they use what is known as keywords or, uh, yeah, they use keywords. Mm -hmm. So though the messages are not directly read via WhatsApp, mm -hmm. the, pro the messaging goes through a system mm -hmm. that, helps, uh, that helps the service provider um, know whether there is evidence of hate speech, um, uh, inappropriate content and the likes. And as long as it breaks their terms of service, they yeah. have right to block a person or close an application or even ban a user from using the service. Oh, yes. all right. So that's what actually happens. Exactly. So basically what you're saying is that uh, as long as we have the end-to-end -end encryption, encryption, yes. <laughs> <laughs> encryption mm -hmm. our, our data is safe unless, of course, you are involved in some you know shady things shady activities yeah. there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we can sleep well you can bit. sleep well knowing <laughs> just, just don't do anything that would probably put you on the wrong side of the law mm -hmm. or the wrong side of probably whatsapp mm -hmm. um because uh, I, again the last time we were here i remember us talking about people not reading the terms of service and <laughs> the terms and conditions of any yes, app they log in. yeah they just say yes i agree <laughs> they don't read through uh -huh. And unfortunately, sometimes they find they get banned. Uh, they get banned from WhatsApp and they don't know why. Mm. So they go telling everybody, I've been hacked, I've been hacked, <laughs> when in truth, uh, they probably broke a terms of, spa uh, terms of service. Yeah. One, of the most easiest, one of the easiest ways you can get banned on WhatsApp is through spam. You mm. know the tabia for the two aunties for WhatsApp groups when they <laughs> see one message and they send to everybody. <laughs> click on this link. Do you yeah, want click to on this link. Governments do what, militaries do what, yeah, exactly. and you know it's not real. Mm -hmm. um, when you overdo it, it's recognized as spam. You are affecting other users' experiences. Okay. That's one of the terms and service violations that you might encounter that might lead you to getting banned on WhatsApp. All right. Yes. So it's very important mm -hmm. for you to read the terms and service terms of service. Mm -hmm. It's also very important for you to understand like your limits, uh, the limits of your use on uh, on any any of these social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, if any of the things that violate the terms of service, hate speech, spam, inappropriate content is recognized, there is a high chance you will get. Band. Band. All right. Yeah. Now I know. I know that. I didn't know that clicking on those links, uh, the spams, mm -hmm. uh, you can you stand a chance to get banned you can, on yeah. these platforms. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the threats of encryption? Okay. Some of the threats of encryption include one that I have talked about is legislation. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's always a fight online about. There's always a fight in public. Uh, concerning free speech and uh, the, the balance or the thin line between free speech, hate speech, free speech and violation of a country's laws, free speech and interference with the government activities. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have asked in terms of privacy, why don't, why does the government have, you know, access to our data, especially when we feel we might be, uh, we might be looked into and the government might try to look for other things other than the thing they're looking for. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, 
I will give an example of the United States. Back in 2017, mm -hmm. um, a, a, major, uh, a major phone developer known as Apple mm -hmm. prevented the FBI from accessing uh, people's private, co uh, private data, mm -hmm. including messages and uh, calls and video chats. Um, because they believed as a company it would infringe on their users' privacy. Despite it going against the legislation at the time which allowed the government of the day to be able to Peru. So there's always a, f there's always a friction mm. about that particular thing. Okay. The second thing is cyber hacking. Um, last month, last month but one or two, we faced uh, several, like a cyber attack from, I don't Did know whether... US? Yeah? The DDoS attack. Yeah, the DDoS attack that mm. happened. It's not sh we are not really sure whether it came from Sudan. I'm not really sure they came from Sudan. The, the people who claimed responsibility were from Sudan, yeah. but we don't know who really enacted the attack. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, DDoS attacks or any types of cyber attacks can, uh, affect, your, can affect your privacy mm -hmm. because hackers might have um, uh, systems in place or algorithms designed to break encryption. Okay. As long as they understand how that particular encryption works, they have the ability to break it. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the threats that are available for um, available. The threats that are available for uh, for encryption. encryption. Yes. All right. Speaking of the cyber attacks, mm -hmm. are there also these types of, of links that we get uh, the spam links mm -hmm. again that um, actually sent. They're actually encrypted, mm -hmm. and we don't know. So when you click on it, then you are you know, through phishing and all the different types of cyber attacks mm -hmm. that we also get. So that's the other downside to it because they also use en encryption. And they use encryption. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, because of the way encryption works, one of the one of the ways people uh, one of the ways people take over your account to view is through phishing. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is something you've actually reminded me about, uh, and this has affected a lot of people. Um, for I know there are a bunch of insecure boyfriends out here who try and access their you girlfriend's phones. You are, yeah, you're addressing Grace's question. <laughs> <laughs> <She's listening. laughs> uh -huh. For There are people who try accessing their girlfriend's phones. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp introduced a feature that allows you to connect to your WhatsApp account through the web mm -hmm. uh, using your phone number without directly having access to your phone. Uh, and for, this presents a lovely opportunity if you're using your own personal desktop. But it you're talking about the WhatsApp web? The WhatsApp web, yeah. Oh, okay. The WhatsApp web that mm -hmm. allows you to use like WhatsApp on the internet directly without having to use your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, it presents a good opportunity for convenience uh, for those who like have to multitask and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it also presents a risk. There are people who I know take advantage of WhatsApp web to... Uh, get access to their girlfriend's phone numbers and therefore messages. Yeah. Uh, there are also apps that exist like Spy Pro or something like that that exist that copy uh, users' data. They copy mm -hmm. the data directly by cloning instead of phishing, mm -hmm. uh, cloning the person's data through WhatsApp. How does it do that? Explain to us. So, for example, with WhatsApp Web, what they do is mm -hmm. they ask their girlfriend for their phone number. Of course, they'll play the game of, see, you trust me. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they'll take the phone number, they will connect it to their own either web or app that has that particular uh -huh. uh, authorization. They put in the phone number and from there they can be able to see your messages and even interrupt or stop messages from being sent and received. Uh, in other okay. cases, they use links, phishing links, um, where now b when you click on that link, there is script attached to that particular link that locks you out of your WhatsApp account, but enables the hacker to have access mm. to your WhatsApp account. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> that can only be done with IT guys. Yeah. <laughs> who are you dating? <laughs> Be careful who you do. <laughs> Choose wisely. The profession matters. <laughs> I mean, wow. So people go to that extent. People go to that extent. So that's uh, basically that's what phishing is. For those that don't understand uh, phishing. Phishing and, and cloning, essentially. That's mm -hmm. like the easiest way to explain it. Yeah. Um, they only take these methods because mm -hmm. of WhatsApp's uh, encryption system mm -hmm. that is end-to-end -end secured, which means even WhatsApp themselves don't see. How they note okay. the keywords, however, is uh -huh. because it's already in the system. Mm -hmm. The system is able to note those keywords. And WhatsApp itself has that detection system on the app itself. 
So though the keywords can be figured out, the app does not transmit any data to Facebook mm -hmm. or Meta. It goes directly from you to the other person. Okay. And only our WhatsApp, our WhatsApp app mm -hmm. can decode what you sent. All right. Yes. So, all right. Now we know that uh, apart from cloning and phishing, WhatsApp doesn't transmit data to Facebook or Instagram. Yes. What about from um, uh, Facebook to Instagram? Because, well, you know, when you um, search on something on Instagram, mm -hmm. when you go to Facebook, that's what... You'll probably find you'll it. You'll probably find it. Okay. So there is always the element of interconnected uh, apps. Mm -hmm. You understand that uh, the, the parent company of Facebook known as Meta mm -hmm. owns... WhatsApp yeah. owns Facebook, owns Instagram, Instagram. and the new, uh, the new app known as Threads. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the last time I used that app. <laughs> <laughs> so, come to it later. <laughs> so what happens is uh, with, what, with Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. there's something known as interconnected experiences, which is an, a feature that was developed for it. Uh, with interconnected experiences, they take, they are, th with your permission of course, they allow you to link whatever your activity on Instagram with your activity on Facebook. If you enable that, whatever you post on Instagram can also and will also be posted to Facebook. Exactly. This is very helpful for those who want to try and p make one post for multiple uh, platforms. Mm -hmm but from the same, from one platform. So for example, if I'm posting a picture on Instagram, let's say today, since I've been here, mm -hmm. I wanna post a picture on Instagram and tell people, yo, I've been here, it's been a lovely day, and I want everybody to see it from Instagram to Facebook, Facebook. to even WhatsApp possibly. I'd want interconnected experiences turned on. Mm -hmm. That would allow me to have one post sent to multiple platforms. platforms. Exactly. Yes. All right, awesome. Now. With the threat, what are some of the solutions that are there? Uh, some of the solutions I believe they tackled last year, and I will touch on them. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to do is to make sure you keep, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to have a digital identity online, make sure it is a digital identity that only you want the world to see. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, you only share what you want to share and don't share anything more or less. Um, that's one thing. Another thing you can do, is uh, be careful who you share your number with or which links you click, uh, as it might affect your privacy or affect your encryption stability. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you might want to do is try and um, probably limit, uh, limit the t kind of websites you access, mm -hmm. because some websites use, um, use um, cyber hacking, uh, cyber hacking things like uh, let's uh, key logging. This key logging, mm -hmm. there is um, there are apps that take screenshots, uh, n malicious apps that take screenshots of your phone. They mm -hmm. clone, uh, they copy information from your phone and send it uh, back to their servers. So you wanna be careful which kind of uh, websites and apps you access. Um, one of the easiest ways to know that the site is secure. When you access the website from uh, Google Chrome or whichever website that which whichever web uh, browser app that you use, mm -hmm. make sure the first line of that uh, web link that you access is HTTPS. HTTPS, the S and the uh, the S at the end of it stands for secure. It's mm -hmm. been designed to be secure. Uh, that pr that uh, probably ensures your protection online. Okay. Yes. And that's key to note. Any website that's just hit it. HTTP is not secure. It, it has secure. to have the S yes. with it. Yes. All right. What about uh, cookies? For those that you know, people say accept cookies. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So is it safe to always click on accept cookies for every website you go to? I'll begin by explaining what cookies are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cookies are. Uh, it's just a technique. It's just a. Let's say it's just a nickname or a term mm -hmm. for short-term uh, short-term data that is used on web apps. Okay. So, for example, some certain certain web apps require uh, require some memory in order to operate or run, because based on like various decisions you decide uh, various decisions you decide to take on the app. So, for example, if it is a shopping app, you probably want it to remember what you put in the cart, mm -hmm. or you probably want it to remember what uh, what thing you searched last time, mm -hmm. or which which item you clicked on last time so that the next time you access the website, you can easily find it. Um, cookies are designed for that reason. Mm -hmm. They're designed to keep um, short, 
snippets of data that can be used to easily open, quickly open their website first mm -hmm. and easily remember what you were doing the last time you were on the website. Mm -hmm. um, when, web, when website asks for cookies, what they're essentially doing is giving you, the user, a choice to decide whether you want that particular set of information available to them or not. Okay. So that's um, when, they, when a website, next time the website tells you, do you want to accept cookies? Um, now you know what cookies are mm -hmm. and whether you're comfortable with that website, that particular website having those cookies. But why is it that then there's some website where you, when you don't accept the cookies, or I may be wrong, mm -hmm. if you don't accept the cookies, then you're not able to go, you know, to scroll through the website. If it's a, let's say, if it's a website, um, uh, I don't know, website that is doing, okay, a news website, mm -hmm. then you are not able to read through the whole story if you don't accept the cookies. Okay, some websites require those cookies um, to operate based on uh, how, whichever way that website was built. There are websites that are built that require cookies to completely function. Uh, because logging of the logging of that data is not accessible to the web developers themselves. Mm -hmm. It is only accessible to the user, and only when the user accepts the cookies uh, is that information available to the web developers in order to optimize their websites. Mm -hmm. In such an instance, then cookies are vital for that app, for that website or that app's success. Um, in instances where also another thing is ad blocking. Ad blocking, mm. uh, it's related, it's similar, but it's not necessarily tackling on encryption. Mm -hmm. um, we know why we do ad blocking. Malicious ads, boring, uh, boring ads that kind of like, like fill the screen. Yeah. Uh, web, some certain websites require ads to function. And what I mean by require ads to function is that's where they make their bread and butter. So okay. sometimes when we add ad blocks on these websites, we prevent them from making any money. money. And it becomes very difficult to keep the website up because it actually costs, uh, um, not, it's not cheap to keep a website up. So mm -hmm. they use ads to try and, you know, get, uh, get an income and keep the website's lights on, okay. uh, uh, hypothetically. So there are some apps that will refuse to operate once you've enabled an ad blocker. Mm -hmm. That is in order to secure, first of all, that they get some money mm -hmm. and also to secure uh, the services that they probably would provide to other, uh, to other you know, service providers. For example, that ad space mm -hmm. is a service, mm -hmm. so they need to ensure that that happens. Okay. Yeah. Now that we're speaking on this line, mm -hmm. there's something that also usually happens uh, for people who watch movies in this website's like uh, I don't know one to three movies, mm -hmm. different different si different sites. Mm -hmm. So when you click on it, it usually redirects you to another tab, and it's it, you know it's uh, for me <laughs> mm -hmm. usually looks like it's a virus. You know, mm -hmm. it can infect your laptop mm -hmm. or something. How how safe is it using this sites? Okay, first of all, you should be aware. I know Kenyans to mezoya mambo ya vitu ya boerere, vitu vya boerere. But mm -hmm. uh, first of all, those those websites are not legal; they are illegal. Yeah. Meaning they are infringing on copyright. They are infringing on the data that was developed by these, you know, these individual studios. And that means by deciding to join that website, <laughs> you have access. You have opened yourself up to potential threats okay. because these websites also need uh, money to work mm -hmm. so they'll obviously be littered with ads and some of these ads are redirects they mm -hmm. are short form ads which lead you to other links exactly. which also lead you to other links mm -hmm. and that is done on their end to prevent like easy tracking of whoever is making this website. Mm -hmm. um, the end is, the goal is to try and make money from the ads, and the goal is also not to get spotted uh, <laughs> for doing illegal shady things. So just know if you're watching from one to three movies, F movies, then you are exposing yourself to these kinds of people. Okay, but yes. does, it, does it have any uh, harm on your machine? Well, it depends on what you click. If you just click around aimlessly and accept every link that follows, Mm -hmm. there is a high chance you will be infected with malware. Malware is mm -hmm. malicious software, mm -hmm. uh, basically. It's malicious software. Malicious software can do anything from copy the information that is on your laptop, copy mm -hmm. 
important information, track every key that you type, mm -hmm. you know, including passwords and stuff. Oh, okay. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. or phishing links, uh, links that, you know, take your data or ransomware apps that close your laptop and tell you give us money or you will never access your files again <laughs> oh goodness wow yeah it gets crazy <laughs> <laughs> gets really crazy and yeah. one day we will you know uh, get to understand all the types of cybersecurity issues that are there mm -hmm. like the ransomware mm -hmm. uh, now as we come to a close mm -hmm. on this tell us how the landscape looks like on encrypt the encryption landscape um i could say the the landscape is great but there are new challenges coming yeah. Already a lot of encryption methods have been locked down, they're universal, they're standard, they're understood. Mm -hmm. And that means it's even more secure for the end user. However, there are new technologies always coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about something that sounds like sci-fi to a lot of you, quantum computing. Okay. Now, quantum computing has come up and because of how quantum computers work, they're able to break uh, encryption cycles. Yeah, very easily, in fact. Uh, what would take a normal computer about 256 years to break, it <laughs> can take a quantum computer merely seconds. And so now people are trying to find ways to ensure that their encryption methods cannot be unencrypted by quantum, quantum computers. Okay. Yes. So that's something that is coming with technology. It's already here. It's, it's only that it's not in Kenya yet, but <laughs> it's already here. It's already here. There are more than five quantum computers that exist in the world. They are in different campuses in the United States and in Google. So that poses a threat to encryption? It poses a threat to encryption, yes. All right. So we need to develop something bigger than that, or something that can be able to handle quantum computers. Quantum computing, yes. All right. Anything else we need to do about encryption before we close it up? Yes, I mm -hmm. believe uh, it is very important to look at the kind of apps that you use mm -hmm. and find assurances for encryption. A lot of us use apps that do not state whether they do have encryption, aka like in a Telegram and the likes. Okay. Uh, there is no assurance that there is, a, that there is any type of encryption and so you need to figure out whether you feel safe using these websites whether you're okay with these websites having your data or not uh, and whether you feel safe you know typing on this message uh, typing on these types of messages uh, but for the previous presenter that was here don't worry nobody's reading your whatsapp chats unless you want them to <laughs> so <laughs> oh, unless you're doing some malicious business yes. out there. <laughs> Grace, you were safe. That's what we are saying. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Tehila, for coming on board and sharing it's a pleasure. It's the a amazing pleasure. insights. Now yes. we know about encryption. Mm -hmm. I hope we do. The one to three is about encryption. We've gotten a good understanding of it and how secure you are with end-to-end -end encryption. That has been Tehila Kachila, who is a product officer at Akil Cash with us on Sport & Tech. Now we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with some great entertainment. So stick with us.